Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Tender Branson, the last surviving member of the Creedish Death Cult, has commandeered a Boeing 747, emptied of passengers, in order to tell his story to the plane's black box before it crashes. Brought up by the repressive cult and, like all Creedish younger sons, hired out as a domestic servant, Tender finds himself suddenly famous when his fellow cult members all commit suicide. As media messiah, he ascends to the very top of the freak show heap before finally and apocalyptically spiralling out of control. Why, when you're writing a blurb and every word counts, would you use the phrase in order to when you could just say to? So when he kicks the pilot out of this um, air aeroplane that he's commandeered, uh, they're dropped under 10,000 feet and pull open the forward cabin door and then the pilot jumps out with uh, a parachute and he says uh, Even before I shut the cabin door I stand at the edge of the doorway and take a leak after him Nothing in my life has ever felt that good and I just find it amusing the idea of hijacking a plane and he's just distracted because he really badly needs a piss he can't think about anything else So uh, we learn from going back to this guy's childhood and he didn't really know what was going on in the outside world and it said uh, Adam had been outside the church district colony just one time when he and his wife had to register their marriage to make it legal with the government. In the outside world, he said, people were visited in their houses by spirits they called television. Spirits spoke to people through what they called the radio. People used what they called a telephone because they hated being close together and they were too scared of being alone. This little line I thought was excellent. The day after Memorial Day, the janitor comes along with a rolling garbage bin and collects all the fresh flowers. The lowest grade of fresh flowers is what florists call funeral grade. And so we learn about like this hierarchical system they've got where basically the eldest son uh, inherits all the stuff and he says, People ask if I'm ever mad that I lost the right to own property and raise a family just because my brother was three and a half minutes ahead of me. And I've learned to tell them yes. That's what people in the outside world want to hear. But it's not true, I've never been mad. That would be the same as getting angry over the idea that if you had been born with longer fingers, you might be a concert violinist. It's the same as wishing that your parents had been taller, thinner, stronger, happy. One of the blessings that the members of this cult uh, bestow upon each other is may you die with all your work complete. And we get this little line about one of the characters. Uh, she never used to smoke, but more and more she tells me she can't stand the idea of living to a ripe old age. I'm currently quitting smoking. I'm currently on four days. This guy's trying to make himself look good as well. He puts mascara up at each... It <coughs> this guy's trying to make himself look good and he says, I scuff the shine off my shoes at the makeup mirror of the woman I work for. I put a mascara up inside each nostril until my nose hair looks thick and full. Then I catch a bus. Maybe he's not trying to look good, maybe he's trying to look bad. So this is the kind of very dark thought that I have. He says, I sit in the back of the bus so no one can sit behind me with a knife, a poison dart, a piano wire, garrote. So actually, if you sit in the corner in restaurants and pubs, it's called the policeman's seat. I like this little line. If your body is a temple, you can pile up too much deferred maintenance. If your body is a temple, mine was a real fixer-upper. Another great line. Since change is constant, you wonder if people crave death because it's the only way they can get anything really finished. And there's this company that makes its living like copywriting names for potential products that don't exist yet so that the companies have to then buy the names from them. Which is very similar to uh, patent trolling. So he says, we have names copyrighted for cars that haven't been designed, software that's never been written, miracle dream cures for epidemics still on the horizon, every product we can anticipate. Here he says, imagine how you'd feel if your whole life turned into a job you couldn't stand. No, everybody thinks their whole life should be at least as much fun as masturbation. If only. Another great line, amphetamines are the most American drug. You get so much done, you look terrific, and your middle name is accomplishment. And I like this little bit as well, it talks about or, uh, organized religious services, I guess. Um, we were smoking cigarettes, I remember. Down on stage, some local preacher was doing his opening act. Part of his warm up was to get the audience hyperventilated. Loud singing does the job, or chanting. According to the agent, when people shout this way or sing Amazing Grace at the top of their lungs, they breathe too much. People's blood should be acid. When they hyperventilate, the carbon dioxide level of their blood drops and their blood becomes alkaline. Respiratory alkalosis, he says. People get lightheaded. People fall down with their ears ringing. Their fingers and toes go numb. They get chest pains. They sweat. This is supposed to be rapture. People thrash on the floor with their hands cramped into stiff claws. This is what passes for ecstasy. People in the religious business call it lobstering, the agent says. They call it speaking in tongue. A little insight into author life here. The thing about book signings, the agent says, is they're exactly the same as the last day of high school when everyone wants you to write in their high school annual. Only a book tour can go on for the rest of your life. Oh, shoulda. Uh, this sounds, this, this to me was quite relatable as well because I've recently quit drinking and I found this happened too. Um, the thing about sex, the agent tells me, is no matter how much you crave it, you can forget. 
Back when he was a teenager, the agent developed an allergy to milk. He used to love milk, but he couldn't drink it. Years later, they developed lactose-free milk he can drink, but now he hates the taste of milk. When he quit drinking alcohol because of a kidney problem, he thought he'd go crazy. Now he never thinks about having a drink. And then we get this bit, um, she tells me Trevor killed himself because his life had no more surprises, no more adventure. He was terminally ill. He was dying of boredom. The only mystery left was death. And I actually have a short story uh, called The Hanging Man about a guy who basically kills himself because death is, is he sees it as the next great adventure. Uh, quite an old one. But yeah, overall, as you can tell, I did enjoy this. I just enjoy Paul and Nick's writing in general because it's very playful and very weird. Uh, and this was a pretty good sort of example of his stuff. I'd give it probably a 4.5 out of 5. Um, the stuff on the plane doesn't really take up too much of it, so mostly it's just looking at his, his past. So this is more for one if you're interested in the cool angle as opposed to the him flying a plane until he runs out of fuel angle. But yeah, I would enjoy it, especially if you've read Paul and Nick before and enjoyed his stuff. So yeah, but that's what I made of Survivor by Chuck Paul and Nick. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.